Let's go ahead and move on to looking now at groups. Within any experiment, there are two main types of groups, our treatment group and our control groups. Treatment groups are the groups or the group that receives the treatment. All right, so it is treated usually by our independent variable. And then your control groups are a point of comparison for the treatment group. So both of these type of groups in your experiment are incredibly important. The control group helps show what happens if independent variables, if the independent variable is not changed or added. And so, as I said before, this serves as a perfect point of comparison so you can ensure that your data collected from your treatment groups actually mean something. If your treatment group gets the same results as your control group, that won't tell you very much, right? Other than maybe your treatment doesn't work. So, this is very important. Now, within control groups, though, there are two kinds of controls. Well, two main kinds of controls, I should say. And those are our positive and our negative controls. Keep in mind that not all experiments have control groups, but most definitely should. All of the experiments that you are running in Life 102 Biology should probably have control groups, okay? So now let's break down the difference between negative and positive control groups, starting with our negative control groups. Negative control groups are basically a group in an experiment that is set up the exact same as all other groups, right? So it's set up the same as your treatment group, except it receives no treatment. So the only difference between your negative control group and your treatment group is that your treatment group receives the treatment that you're testing and the negative control group does not receive the treatment. It either doesn't receive anything or it receives what we call a placebo. The purpose of a negative control is to serve as a baseline or a point of comparison for your treatment group. That's the negative control. And every experiment that you design in Life 102 should have at least a negative control. Now a positive control, we don't always find, but it is always best practice. A positive control is a group that uses a different treatment, a treatment that is already known to produce a specific result. So again, this is the same as your treatment group, except instead of using the treatment that you're testing, you use a treatment that you already know produces a specific result. Why would you do this? Well, to make sure that your experiment is set up properly and to make sure that the equipment that you're using in your experiment is functioning, right? If you run your positive control and you get poor results or results that you weren't expecting, even though you used a treatment that we should know the result of already, that tells you that we can't trust our data from our treatment group because our positive control has told us that something has gone awry in our experimental setup, whether that's how we prepared our experiment or the equipment that we used in the experiment. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and apply this now with check-in number seven. Okay, keeping in mind, this is number seven. Dr. Nakia wants to find out if their research group's new cancer drug, Triumph, is effective. So they design an experiment to test the new drug. Participants are divided into three groups for their experiment. Group one receives drug A, which is already known to be effective at treating cancer. Group two receives Triumph, the new drug being tested. And group three receives sugar pills, which should not have any impact on cancer cells. Based on this information, which group is the treatment group? Which is the negative control group? And which is the positive control group? If that problem was challenging for you in any way, or if you're just having trouble distinguishing and understanding the point and purpose of different groups in an experiment, no worries whatsoever. Please always feel free to reach out for assistance. And I have links to very helpful readings and videos already posted in Canvas. So feel free to reference those as well. Check in number eight. Are standardized variables and control groups the same thing? Keep in mind, this is not a trick question. The reason I actually ask this question now is because some people in science refer to standardized variables as control variables. And this can make things very confusing, right? Because a control variable is very different than a control group. So I'm going to ask that you please avoid referring to standardized variables as control variables because it can cause a lot of confusion. We will use the term standardized variable in this course. Remember, a control group is very, very different from a standardized or control variable, okay? Awesome, awesome.